Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome back to the Stanley Parable. It's been like a week, I think, since I made the last episode, or maybe it's been shorter. I don't know, it just seems like a long time. Anyways, when I opened up the game, I got an achievement saying, Welcome back, and I guess not saying, like, Welcome back to the game, as in, like, you came back to the game, here's your achievement, I guess. I don't know, this game has, like, a lot of secrets, so we're gonna begin the game. And this time we're gonna disobey the narrator. Last time we did obey him, we found out that we were, like, being controlled by our boss. I'm guessing. I, mean, I don't know. So, we'll wait for this to load and get into the game. And great. It's freaking not responding. Great. Hate you so much. Alright. So, what we're going to do now is disobey the narrator. So we gotta not listen to the narrator. So all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The what was it? The meeting room. So let's not go to the meeting room. Is this when Stanley came to a set of two open doors? He entered the door on his left. No, we're going to the right this time, boy. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. No, I don't think so, buddy. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. All right. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Uh-huh. Nope. Not today, buddy. Go in here. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. All right. Well, I'm bad at following directions, apparently. And we all know that. There you go. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in no. someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. I don't There's trust him now. Been neglecting Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Can I jump down here? Please, stop trying to make I'm every decision down. by yourself. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't, I don't know, know how how to because there's a door here. Of this, but I really do want to help you to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Hmm. Let me go over here. I feel like we just activated a different ending. Because there are some more choices over there. So I think we activated another ending. Uh, well, this is fine, I guess. I don't, I don't care. Let me go down here. Okay. Well. Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. No, he didn't. He walked through the blue door. Aha. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Blue door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. I know he walked through the red door. Now, where's the freaking blue door? Oh. Well, okay, then. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? 
Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Yes. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Yes. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Not Vehicles? hearing you. Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Hmm. What is... What's through that door? Nah, I'm going... I want to go there, but I can't. So I'm going to go through here. Oh. Well. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me on? about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Yeah, I'll give you a two. Oh, well, now this is useful. You didn't like it, but you didn't totally hate it either. You enjoyed it, perhaps is the correct term. It didn't cause you excruciating pain. Big steps we've made here today, Stanley. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Oh, the Stanley Parable Worldwide, worldwide Leaderboard. In total, nine, nine, 91,730 doors open. 19... Are these all like speed runs or something like that? Did you know that with 21.3% of players skip the intro sequence, only the worst 3% of players chose the blue door? Stanley 437 is online. You are ob objectively ranked. 9,328 9, out of 9,328 players worldwide. Why aren't I ask some friends for help? Error, friends list empty. Oh, I, oh okay then. Alright, you want to go, man? You, you think you're funny then, huh? Okay. Alright, I'm going to get you one day. I promise I'm gonna get you one day. All right, so I guess we're gonna have to go here. There's like no other choice to go. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I could have went through the, the freaking. No. Would you say that compe compe competitive board board helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? I think Again, it's a honest answers, please. I think that's a bug where it keeps like freaking uh messing around with my audio because I'm recording with it. But uh, I give you a five, whatever. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on. I forgot to go to the left door. Lovely opportunity to give it some <coughs> playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. I think that's the door that we went to right there. All right, we're gonna have to sit through this again. Whatever. I don't. I don't give a freak. It's fine. Oh my god, it's not responding again. Great. Never mind. It is. Okay, well, I'll be on my phone while I'm waiting for you. Unless you take, like, freaking... In this game, okay, never mind. the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right. And if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game. All about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So four why hours. don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. God, it's loud. Am I really gonna have to be playing for four hours? Burn in the fire. Can I just keep doing this? You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I don't hate babies. I'm, I'm just out. kidding. I don't, I don't hate babies. It's over.
Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's sure. See. What do we have here? Let's play some freaking Minecraft, though. Play some Roblox. Mm -mm, yes. This seems yes? like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Sure. Minecraft or Roblox? Come on, tell me what you got, bro. Okay, I don't want to play none of your stupid games. I want to play some freaking Minecraft and mine some freaking diamonds, dude. And of course, it's going to be loading again. Oh, this is freaking great. Stanley, is this any better? At last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? Bro, he actually well, got Minecraft. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. Sure you are. Bro, you actually opened up freaking Minecraft. Even though I don't have Minecraft in my Steam library. <coughs> I'm super sick, alright. Bro, you're making a dirt house. I'm super sick today. Yes, of course. And just to finish it all off, yes. I'm gonna go in. It's complete. I made the standing. I can't look at it. Can you, can you make me jump, my narrator? And feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Shut up. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. Yes. You've only gotten half the experience. I want to go Please inside. Step inside and make yourself comfortable. Isn't it grand? No. Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if. Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Yes. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. Yes. Oh, he opened the door. We can't jump, but but I want to mine this 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 tree. There's a mine down here, and you can hear music in the background too. Oh my! It looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? No, I didn't bring no torches. Oh no 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 no! Iron. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. No, I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel Ooh. utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. One out of five. I heard Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. I heard okay, a zombie. Game. I heard a zombie in there. Man, I don't want to play another game. I don't play my freaking Minecraft, dude. I want to play some freaking Minecraft, bro. What's the problem, bro? I just want to play some Minecraft, dude. Just let me play my Minecraft. I want to mine my diamonds, dude. You got a problem with that, dude? Bro, this game won't let me find my freaking diamonds. Usually, as of recording this, I will usually wake up at this time. But I've been up for like three hours right now. It's like 10, it's like 11 o'clock already. And that's the time I usually wake up. <laughs> yes, I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. It's, I couldn't have done it any better myself. It's Portal. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. It, it's Ooh, Portal, you idiot. Curious. Let's go find out what the hell this is. It's Portal. I don't know how to play Portal, though. Oh. Well, then. It's, uh... Oh yay! Taking this this way. Ooh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. You're forte. Oh, this is easy. Can I put it down here? No. I'm taking this with me. Put this down here. Take my radio with me. I love me my radio. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. I really don't care much to see you stumble through any more of these games, and I highly doubt you're any wiser for the experience. Which is why, rather than continue to waste my time, I'm just going to leave you here. You can pretend you've beaten the game if it makes it any richer for you, but as for me, I've had enough. 
So, why don't you get cozy in this room, and if you have any grand revolutionary ideas for the perfect video game, you can just sit there and let it ball up inside you for all eternity. Roblox. I don't need your advice. I don't need your ratings. And I certainly don't need the validation of a man whose job is to push buttons. I think I'll just go about my business making meaningful cultural contributions to the world. And perhaps every now and then, I'll think back to a man named Stanley who was objectively wrong in every decision he ever made. The thought won't last long. Goodbye, Stanley. Good luck with your work. And I sincerely hope that everyone lives happily ever after. Okay. I got my radio with me, bro. I can listen to, like, tracks, like, all day, every day. It's, it's down here. There's a hole down there. I'll take my radio with me. Radio. Work. Radio. Why am I radio not working? You work, you stupid radio. I don't even know where you went. There you go. Work. Can I throw you? Where did you even... You know what? I'll take my radio with you still. I, I believe in you, brother. Alright, where am I... Oh. What's my radio? I want my radio. Room 510. Where's my radio at, bro? I need my radio. Where am I even at? Where? Oh, there's a door open here. Yeet. I feel like I'm just going to get jump scared out of nowhere. got to be careful around here. I don't think any doors you can open. What's that over there? It's a computer. Nothing here. Uh. Is there anything I can do? No, why did I even come here then? What ex did I wonder what he found? If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if I he's happy with world. his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me, someone who will wrap everything up at the end. To make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Okay. Oh, it's a learning stream. All right, great. We're waiting here for another 20 years in this loading screen. I see. All right, it's fine with me. I have my phone with me, bro. 50%, it's all right. Just looking at YouTube. No, no, not me. Okay, yeah, it's like one eighth there. Also, I didn't even realize that I got a new subscriber. That's nice. See, the, the, what I'm trying to say is I don't really care that I got a subscriber. Also, this is probably going to take... Oh, never mind. It's already like almost halfway done. Well, that's perfect because... You know what? I was just thinking about playing right now. Because I'm actually recording a video right now. 
So you mind if you, you know, speed it up a little bit? Because I would really like it. Okay, there you go. Alright, so what we're doing here? Where are we dropping, boys? We're just gonna. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Is this all? Meeting room. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Psych, no, we're going right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Sure, yes. Wow. Yes, this room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. Yep. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. We're going this way, boys. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. What do you mean, buddy? All right, well, I guess... This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Uh, well, okay then, well... There's a there's a door here. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Uh I'm tempted to pick up the phone. But there's gotta be some way to not do this. I unplug this. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited I didn't. In one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? Yes. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How well, did you do that? I did do it. You actually chose incorrectly? Yes. I didn't even know that was possible. Are you sure Let about me that? Let double check. No. It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... you wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. Yes. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or yep. did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Okay. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. 
but if used incorrectly, can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real personal person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third chair. world nations. I've been needing or he could forever. systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense, and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4-4-30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. What? What is a back sack and crack? Am I really gonna have to put my microphone there? It's 4.30. Is it time for my back sack and crack? Oh, really? Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. Yep. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. All right, which way? Which way are we going, boys? Okay, I can't bring that with me. Let's go this way. Kind of like go in and then get out immediately. choice is meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Okay, then. I'm just... <clears throat> I'm still sick. Where are we done? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We're, do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Skip you. I'm gonna lie all day. Can I? Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Yay. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't know why he gave me a choice. I'm still going to go on the right one. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. No, screw that. No. I want to go over here. I didn't go there. There's 
Are they clipping through each other? I think... I think we have to go back. Can I go back there? No, it isn't. Alright, fine, whatever. Let's go on the left one then. So it's the only way we can go. God, are you living in heaven or what? Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? I what did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to you shut can't the jump. game down entirely? I was trying to jump. To willingly destroy all of my work. My work. I don't know. Alright, well this game's smart. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have I'm to. leaving. Whoa. So clever. Now look where is that we blood? are. Or is that blood? That entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you run it into the ground. What? Did you think that would be funny? Yes. You just had to see. Yes. Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? Yes. He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He yes. understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. Yes. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you. Yes. You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I yes. worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Did I crash? You behave exactly oh. as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Still not following the rules. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. Is, is it going to keep... Behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Still going the right one. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. Just behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm still going to the one on the right. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. Behave exactly as standing. I think it's just going to be that the same. Choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Fine, we'll go on the left one. Freaking idiot. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. All right. From here on out, I'm trying my best to not follow rules. Can't even go in the broom closet again. 
coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, you can't go in there either. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Does this game actually listen to your mic? Night Shark 115. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. Night. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please no. speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Night Shark 115. Okay, fine. You're not gonna do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you had better things I to do. I said the well, dang I answer. You for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. So do if I. If you want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. All right, chill, big fella. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on your end. Holy... Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. The end. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You can't be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Why is he getting emotional over this? Is this the end of the freaking ending? Is this is really that was that was an end? I want to try one more thing. I want to try to get the the call on the phone. I'm gonna try that, but that's like all I'm gonna try. So I'll all see you like 30 minutes later. Look Shut up, Nara. To let her back into your life, she's been. Busy.
That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. All right. I'm going to pick up the phone. Even though the narrator did just spoil the ending. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your day. <laughs> what? Gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. I hate you so much. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Hold up. Press the under keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Oh! Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. What if I don't press M? Press A? X? Alright. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. So he's telling me how to press, what desk, buttons to press. Stanley dreamed Just like of in my job. Expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Press P. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Please press K to spend time with the boys. All right. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. I don't know if this is PewDiePie. Last, Boys. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Prepare to prepare dinner. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. To tell your kids a story. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Tell your wife you love her. All right. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Oh, to go to sleep. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Oh, here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. All right. Should we press the button or not? I'm pressing a different button. I'm press G. 
F R E Z Z X C V F D S W A R T I'm just not going to press the button I don't think anything's gonna happen. Just press B. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Please press 9 to question nothing. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. Please and die. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I... What the freak was... It said, please die. I don't know what that's all about. And that's the ending. Great. That's the freaking ending. Alright, well, we're done with this game now. We're ending the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are, well, I don't know. We're, uh, we got some more endings. There's some more endings to do, so we'll get those another time. Okay, then, without getting close. Okay, well, I'll see you guys in the next video.